When I came to the chamber four years ago, one of the first people to call and welcome me to the community was our county executive. And through conversations and study, I know that Howard County has been fortunate to have been served by great people who just happen to be county executives. Each of them has had a strong desire to serve and make life better for those that call Howard County home. County Executive Ball follows in that great tradition. Many of you are familiar with County Executive Ball as he served on the County Council for 12 years. He is a highly respected educator as evidenced by the PhD he holds in the work at, and his work at several local and online universities. You also know that he has been active in the Columbia community for years serving in numerous capacities. He is the recipient of numerous awards and accolades. In Dr. Ball, you have someone that is dedicated to serving others and making Howard County better for future generations. He is truly someone that wants government to work for all and where people of all various economic statuses and hues of color have a seat at the table. Awards, recognitions, and pats on the back aside, Calvin is a family man at heart. I firmly believe that what drives him is knowing his success makes life better for the three ladies in his life, his wife Shawnee and daughters Alexis and Alyssa. And so with that, I ask that you turn your attention to the screens. I'm honored to be the county executive for all of Howard County, for Columbia, born from a vision of inclusion, ripe for renaissance of revitalization for an Elkridge with historic roots that run deeper than most communities in America, yet can be an American example for the infrastructure and public facilities for tomorrow. For an Ellicott City who will not be defined by floods, but who, with me as your champion, will become a national model for unity, safety, strength and resilience for every farmer and all of our neighbors in Western Howard County. We can become the best example of embracing the future of agriculture and the quality of life for rural communities. I'm honored to be the county executive for all of Howard County, from Jessup to North Laurel, Skaggsville, Highland, Dayton, West Friendship, Woodstock, Glenelg, and every corner of our great county. I'm honored to be your representative and tireless advocate. And I commit to you that I will do so with innovation, transparency, proactive, and sensible leadership that remains rooted in the values and quality of life we all cherish. As we all know and feel, our country is shifting. Our nation is at a true crossroads, perhaps the most significant in our lifetime. The very fabric of who we are is being tested. Howard County has deeply rooted values of inclusion, equity, responsible stewardship of our resources, and prosperity for all. With our will and our ethos, we can be a beacon of light, brightly shining as a model of hope. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our new county executive, Dr. Calvin Ball. Thank you all so much for your support and your attendance today and thank you Leonardo for your very kind introduction. And on a personal note, I'd just like to thank you for your dedication to our residents and also your willingness to serve on not only my transition team, but the exploratory committee to create an Ellicott City Community Development Corporation. Let's give Leonardo a big round of applause.
I'd also like to thank Pete and the Mangione family for hosting us once again here at Turf Valley and for all that you do for our community. Pete, this is your 40th year of ownership of Turf Valley, and here's to 40 more. This year, we're celebrating the 50th year of the Chamber of Commerce. 1969, the year the Chamber was founded, was also the year that we began a charter form of government. And when we swore in our first county executive and county council, it's an honor to deliver my first day of the county address as your county executive. And over the past years, I've had the honor of serving with many great leaders on the county council. And I look forward to growing with our new county council, Christiana, Opal, Liz, Deb, David, over the next few years. Please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Recently, I had the pleasure of spending time with some of our former county executives and hearing their experience and getting some great advice that was invaluable. And we are going to acknowledge some amazing Howard County residents this afternoon. But first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge an incredible person in my life, my rock, the best wife and mother to our 18, Alexis and Alyssa, and the first lady of Howard County, Shawnee Ball. Since taking office in December, I and my leadership team and cabinet have dedicated ourselves to serving Howard County in a manner that continues to foster excellence. Jim, w Jim Rouse wisely noted that visions describe what best should be and could be if and when mankind has the will to make them real. I know we have the shared vision and the will to make Howard County the best county in this nation, not just overall, but for all. Not because we have one of the best public education systems, and I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Moderano. <laughs> and Kirsten Coombs and the other members of the Board of Ed. And not just because we have one of the safest communities, not just because our communities like Columbia continue to attract families, businesses, and the arts, and not just because we're critical to the national security of our country, not even just because we have residents who are resilient, compassionate, and civil. We are going to be the best county throughout our nation because we govern decisively and have a sense of urgency in addressing the challenges of today and seizing the opportunities of tomorrow while advancing Howard County values. When I selected my leadership team and cabinet appointments, I wanted the commonality of urgency, passion, and compassion to serve all of our residents. I'd like to ask each member of my leadership team and our cabinet to stand so I can recognize you for your dedication. The Howard County government is made up of nearly 3,500 employees who are committed to treating every one of our residents like family. And unfortunately, over the last year, we tragically lost a member of our family. Nathan Flynn was a 34-year-old firefighter and a 13-year veteran of the Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Services assigned to Station 10, Rivers Park in Columbia. 
Responding to a fire at a large home in the early hours of the morning, Nathan died battling that inferno. Nate was our first career firefighter to perish in the line of duty. And we're honored to have Nate's wife, Celeste, and his family joining us here today. Thank you for your dedication. We appreciate Nate's heroism and sacrifice. I'd also like to take this moment to acknowledge all of those who put their lives on the line each and every day for our safety. I'm proud to have selected some of the best first responders in the state to lead our police and fire departments and would like to acknowledge Police Chief Lisa Myers, Fire and Rescue Services Chief Christine Yulhorn. The decisions and investment we make now will impact the residents of our county over decades and future generations. History will be our judge for the choices that we make today. And we must stand up for our children who are struggling to overcome the achievement gap. We must stand up for our families who can barely afford to live in our community, but contribute to the beautiful tapestry of who we are. We must stand up for those older adults on fixed incomes who sometimes are forced to choose between rent, food, or their prescriptions. We must stand up for our neighbors and our loved ones with mental health challenges or substance abuse addictions. We have to stand up for our homeless sisters and brothers, as well as those who are targeted based upon their religion or who they love. Our time is now to stand up for all of our residents. And to fully understand the concerns of our residents, we did something that most politicians aren't well known for we listened. Throughout the first two months in office, we gathered over a hundred of the brightest minds in Howard County to serve on my transition team, and last month they presented us with that report. I want to acknowledge and thank Senate Majority Leader Guy Gazzoni for chairing this transition team, and everyone who volunteered your time, and if you served on the transition team, please stand and be acknowledged. Thank you. And if you haven't had an opportunity to read it, please do. They provided us with 282 areas of opportunity to improve Howard County. And during our first 60 days, we also hosted nine listening sessions around the county and on social media. Over 800 residents participated, and we received nearly 600 comments. And we analyzed the content of those suggestions. And a couple weeks ago, we publicized and shared an infographic. As we did analysis on the listening session data, we saw that there were many striking similarities between the concerns we were hearing and the rec recommendations in our transition team report. However, frankly, what keeps me up at night, if we want to become the best, then we'll need to make very tough fiscal decisions early on and be good stewards of your taxpayer dollars. Our priority is crystal clear, to ensure that we maintain our triple A bond rating. In case you missed it, there was a headline this November by Bloomberg and I wanted to share it with you because it alarmed me. One of America's richest suburbs lost its triple A bond rating. This article about, is about Westchester County, New York, 
a place where the median price of a single home is $675,000, and the average property tax bill was the highest in the U.S., losing their AAA bond rating due to fiscal mismanagement. And the thought of Howard County losing its AAA bond rating should be a cause of concern to every county resident, business, and government official. Only 43 of the over 3,000 counties across our country have achieved those AAA bond ratings from each of the three bond rating agencies. And Howard County has done that for 22 years. That's right, I voted on 13 of those budgets. <laughs> This is critically important to our county finances, allowing reduced costs over the life of borrowing and helping us to address the challenges and the opportunities that we face. Howard County saves approximately $700,000 per hundred million of bond issuance for being a triple A as, a as compared to just a double A. So why am I so concerned? For the first time in over a decade, we are no longer one of the top five wealthiest counties in the nation. In fact, we recently dropped out of the top 10 to number 13. Our fire fund is growing in its structural deficit. An increase in the fire tax was needed, frankly, years ago, and will be required to keep the fund solvent for, for the foreseeable future. Our police department has essentially kept its sworn positions flat during the past few years. And a recent consultant study identified significant staffing needs to adequately support public safety. Our Department of Public Works has an over $52 million backlog in road resurfacing and repair work. And our detention center built in 1982 has multiple security, regulatory, and operational issues that haven't been addressed in years, which now require millions of dollars of immediate investment. A replacement building in the future may cost an estimated $87 million. Howard County's debt service payments continue to grow, taking on one-third to half of our new revenues each year. Furthermore, our population continues to grow. We see our student population has grown at a rate of 1.5%, and our 65 and over population is growing four to five times that rate. Our school system has submitted a record-breaking budget request, and all of this equals a lot of tough decisions to make. We have plenty of wants, and needs and recommendations to address these problems. But let's tackle the first major theme from our listening sessions, community planning and development. I've heard numerous concerns emphasizing the need to be more mindful of the impact of new development on the everyday experiences of our residents. And there should be a balance between continuing to invest in new development and preserving the quality of life for our communities, the integrity of our infrastructure, and the natural beauty of our county. We need to be more intentional about maintaining this balance as we plan for continued growth and the renewal of this great county for our children and generations to come. An important element of this future will be complete streets so every resident has safe and equitable access to our county. I listened and took the comments seriously as dozens of cyclists came in their full bike gear advocating for streets that provide safe access to users. I will make complete streets a priority to promote our vision of a true multimodal transportation system beginning with more bike lanes. Howard County also needs to lead when it comes. Well, thank you. Howard County also needs to lead when it comes to bus rapid transit. 
BRT offers the opportunity to transform the way we work, play, and experience everything our region has to offer. Our residents demand it, our business community supports it, and we are making it a transportation priority for Howard County. More immediately, we're improving the RTA bus system by implementing route changes, expanding service, and improving connections based upon passenger and community input. What this means is starting May 5th, passengers can count on more frequent, reliable, and more punctual buses, even more service on Saturday and even Sunday on specific routes. When it comes to So when it comes to transportation, our time is now. We must move quickly, but we also must make smart and sustainable decisions. We're proud of our thriving businesses and partners. To be the best, we need to support our invaluable businesses who are already here, while continuing to attract innovative partners into this economic ecosystem. A couple weeks ago, several news stations covered that the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab plans to launch a spacecraft and crash it into an oncoming asteroid to make sure that our planet is protected from the impact. And here's the first paragraph of a Baltimore Sun article covering the story. A team of scientists and astronomers and engineers meets weekly in a conference room on a Howard County, Maryland research campus and plans to save the world. <laughs> Just think about that for a second and what that says about our county. I want to take this moment to acknowledge Dr. Semmel, director of Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab and program manager Helen Winters. And here's to saving the world. <laughs> As our partners do their part, we will also do ours to spur innovation and success. Another emerging theme in the listening sessions was our public school system. To ensure that our prosperity will continue for generations ahead, we must connect the dots between our scientific and economic success to where it all begins, our school system. Residents move to Howard County because of our schools. Businesses move to Howard County because of our schools. And the success of our school system is our county's proudest achievement and frankly our calling card. Our time is now to invest in each one of our schools and in all of our children by increasing our commercial tax base revenue ensuring education funding is a priority. Our time is now to fight for more state funding for our schools, and our time is now to address overcrowding and foster the best teaching and learning environment for all of our children and all of our educators. I want to be clear, we are going to build high schools 13 and 14. And I'm committed to finding funding and doing my part to ensure that both schools are built by 2025. And our time is now to plan better and find available sites for future middle schools and elementary schools. All of our kids and educators should be in modern, nurturing teaching and learning environments in old schools with deferred maintenance and adding more portable classrooms just doesn't cut it. We also need to pay attention to the entire spectrum of childhood development from early pre-K to our use of libraries, parks, and community centers. Prioritizing our children's success before they even start elementary school is a key to building a strong foundation upon which they can grow.
I also want to take a moment to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for our recently received $4 million grant from the Maryland State Department of Education for early childhood education. This grant will be used by the Community Action Council of Howard County to offer expanded programming in its early childhood education centers, and I'd also like to recognize Beta Dayhoff for all of your time and energy over the years. No discussion of education in Howard County will be complete without mentioning our top-notch community college. One of the best colleges in the nation and a partner in building a workforce for the future and growing innovators of tomorrow. Please join me in, doctor, in thanking Dr. Hetherington, Dr. Hetherington, her team, and the Board of Trustees at HCC. During last year's State of the County address, Ellicott City was a Howard County success story. In just over a year and a half from a thousand year flood, this county showed that we can quickly get back up on our feet from a disaster. Three months later, old Ellicott City was flooded once again, and sadly, it came at a loss of another life and a town devastated. We lost National Guardsman Sergeant Edison Eddie Hermond, who unselfishly risked his life attempting to save the lives of others. He will never be forgotten by our county for his actions. His story represents the dedication, resiliency, and unity of the Ellicott City community. And last year's flood made it clear that this county must do something different. And, we must, and it must be done with the understanding that storm threats will be more frequent and more severe. And that is why just three weeks after taking office, I unveiled phase one of our Ellicott City Safe and Sound plan. Safe and Sound is a multi-phase plan built upon the need for public safety, supporting businesses, and creating a community-driven process for decisions of Ellicott City's future. We're exploring opportunities for Main Street that make Ellicott City safer while preserving the history and the culture that make it a national treasure. We created a flood mitigation assistant pilot program that will offer matching grants for flood mitigation projects on structures in designated areas. We enhance inspection and debris removal of nine waterways. We purchased devices for an emergency notification system and we launched a committee to explore developing an Ellicott City Community Development Corporation. We're making progress on our plans on a weekly basis, and I ask that you follow our website, ecsafeandsound.org. And as we rebuild and preserve Ellicott City, our time is now to combat a threat to Ellicott City and, frankly, all of Howard County, climate change. From stormwater management to embracing the most sustainable practices of government, we have a sense of urgency to create a cleaner, greener, and healthier Howard County environment while addressing the overdevelopment of our land that leaves us more vulnerable to the env environmental impacts. Just yesterday, I was, pride, I was proud to sign Howard County into the We Are Still In campaign. We are still in is a promise to leaders around the globe that Americans will not retreat from the global pact to reduce emissions, stem the causes of climate change, and embrace energy independence. Howard County is joining a bipartisan campaign that includes over 3,500 representatives from all 50 states. We must realize that the policies that protect our environment will also help places like Ellicott City, Savage, Elkridge, Columbia, and every other corner of Howard County that could be tragically impacted by natural disasters. We will have a sense of urgency about thousands of Howard County residents who need our help due to poverty, mental health challenges, or addiction. 
In one of my first decisions as county executive, I directed our health department, the Horizon Foundation, and Howard County General, three strong and skilled entities to work together on programs and priorities that will address the health and wellness disparities, access to affordable care, and mental health services. I'm pleased to tell you that today this collaboration is already showing results. In a few weeks, we'll be announcing the launch of our Practice Howard, a program which is combining county resources and administrative support from the hospital to bring new primary care physicians into Howard County. Through this program, we will help physicians repay student loans, find a place to live in Howard County, and that's in exchange for agreeing to practice here for at least five years. Together, we can make sure that our friends and neighbors who arrive in the emergency room with severe behavioral health crises can get faster treatment and better placement through our new navigation program that we are proud to help support. Howard County General is starting to clap up here, y'all. <laughs> Another critical issue we are urgently addressing is the tragic impact of the opioid crisis in our county. According to the Maryland Department of Health, Howard County saw 38 men and women die in Howard County due to opioid overdoses in just 2018. Unfortunately, those tragic numbers don't even include the Howard County residents who tragically overdosed outside of Howard County. To stop these overdoses, two weeks ago, we announced a $1 million grant from the state of Maryland to establish a 24-hour crisis services at the Grassroots Crisis Intervention Center. This issue was top of my agenda when I met with Governor Hogan just last month, and I'm pleased that he shared my sense of urgency in combating addiction. Additionally, we want to be more proactive when notifying the community about specific threats. When risk levels such as identifying a bad batch or traces of fentanyl and other controlled substances, we will now issue targeted specific warnings to the communities impacted in order to prevent overdoses. This proactive alert system will be launching within the next week. My administration will be building on the work of Howard County Police Department to make our notifications to residents more relevant, timely, and informative as we also work with the Department of Fire and Rescue Services, another public safety partner. We also have a rapidly increasing population of older adults in Howard County who are in need from, of services from transportation, health care, recreation to just aging in place. For our residents who are aging in place in Howard County, many are concerned about their prescription drug costs and affordable housing. We're fighting for these residents in Annapolis by supporting a prescription drug affordability board that will review and establish fair, affordable drug costs for all Marylanders. And as our middle class shrinks and more people face poverty, it's critical that all of our neighbors have the opportunity to thrive. We know that a rising, tide, a rising tide lifts all ships. And they sometimes need support from county government, from education, to job support, to meeting basic needs such as affordable housing, health care, food, or even transportation. That support will help guide them on the path to self-sufficiency and be an investment that pays dividends for them, their family, and our entire society. We're also facing unforeseen challenges with the same sense of urgency. For 35 of my first 90 days, we were building this new administration and we faced our newest challenges, which came in the form of the longest government shutdown in the history of our nation. 
In late December, when our federal government shut down, we needed to know immediately how many Howard County families were impacted and what was in our power to help. We quickly learned that in part, because of our proximity to Fort Meade, DC, and several government entities and the number of federal workers and contractors, approximately one in 10 families were impacted by the shutdown. We then took inventory on everything that our government could do to assist these families. We suspended water shutoffs. We made sure that families that had to make recreation and park payments could make those arrangements. We partnered with our school system who offered free and reduced lunches to impacted families. Howard Community College worked with students regarding their tuition payments. We worked with BG&E to provide options for those who needed to pay their electric bill. Our library system temporarily lifted library fines. We created a food distribution center and provided groceries directly to impacted families. And most importantly, we met with and listened to our federal workers and our federal contractors about their fears and frustrations. We reminded them that we treat every resident in our, in our family like family. Our congressional delegation was incredible throughout the entire shutdown, and I want to thank Senators Cardin, Van Hollen, and Congress members Cummings, Rupersberger, and Sarbanes, as well as their staff, for always working with us nonstop, providing updates, and assisting our residents and businesses during that historic 35 days. My office, along with our congressional delegation, is going to continue to advocate for our federal contractors and federal workers. And despite the challenges that we face, the state of our county is strong. And we are only going to grow stronger. On September 12th, 1962, in front of a large crowd gathered in Houston's Rice Stadium, President Kennedy, in his efforts to build support for a space program, said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal to serve, will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are willing, unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. Whether it's standing with our federal workers and contractors, caring for our residents, suffering from addiction and health challenges, supporting our children and educators, valuing older adults, preserving our environment, or growing the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. We choose to listen to the concerns. We choose to find solutions, and we choose to utilize innovative practices for every part of Howard County and accepting all the challenges before us without delay. Not because it is easy, but because it is hard. We are Howard County and we look out for each other. We are Howard County and we save the world. <laughs> we are Howard County and our time is now. We will be the best county in this nation because we are going to govern for all Howard County residents. Thank you and God bless you.